you've heard me say it millions of times and you're gonna hear me say it again and you're gonna hear my guests talk about it today but you as a sales rep your job is to have a killer discovery because when you can have a great discovery it's gonna make your closing so much easier you can't close that deal if you don't have a dynamic discovery and my friend Jeff Bounds he has a saying which I think you're gonna really like as soon as we start the episode but man he brought some good information today go ahead and buckle up it's gonna be good Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast here on TSC TV on YouTube. I am your host, your coach, Donald Kelly, the Sales Evangelist. And I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And as I mentioned, we have Mr. Jeff Bounds, and we're going to talk about discovery, specifically discovery questions or the type of questions you should be asking in your discovery meeting, because when you have a great discovery, you're just that much closer to closing your deal. We don't want you to snoop and skip past this and just skirt around it. You, you can't do that. You need to make sure you have a really good conversation. And Jeff is going to help us understand that today. Here's why. Jeff has over 25 years of experience working in sales and marketing and closing millions of dollars in deals. And today, Jeff is actually the head of automotive for Cardone Automotive Solutions. And you're going to hear from his conversation with me, his passion and some of the great things that he's doing and some of the organizations that he's been able to impact the in individuals. But he's going to give you some specific things that you can take as a seller and apply right now. And this is why I love it. Very practical and just straight to the point. So as we dive in, as I mentioned in the teaser, you're going to hear Jeff go right out the gate. He's just like a, a bull just going right out the gate, man. And we, we, do, we dove straight into some of those uh, principles. And you're going to hear him tell you why, tell you the, his, tell his, his, uh, his message on why he believes the discovery is so, so, so critical. Check it out. Welcome to the show, Jeff. Hey, I'm happy to be on. I appreciate you having me. Man, of course, man. I'm super excited. I was just bragging in a teaser there about how we were talking before we actually started recording about discovery questions and how critical it is. So I, I'm I'm ready to dive straight into this goodness and to pick your brains on this. But you said some things at the beginning, Jeff, before we started recording about discovery question. Why don't you reiterate that real quick? And then we can go into the conversation and maybe come up with some discovery questions that are good to ask. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, the, the interesting thing about sales is, you know, everybody wants to talk about closing because it's sexy, right? You think about Glenn G Gary, Glenn Ross, you think about Boiler Room, you know, all these movies around sales and, and people are preconditioned. Let me buy all the closing books. Let me get the closing material. But what I'm going to drop on you right away is something that everybody should write down. You can't close a door that you don't open. <laughs> and, and, and the reality is all the gold is in the fact finding. All the gold is in the finesse of finding out what you can do to help somebody solve a problem. And that's one of the main things that I see today in sales that most people miss. So you, you gave allusion to the Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross and some of these movies that are out there, which I do. I, I'm not going to hurt, you know, argue against because that's total true. I think it's they make. I feel if you make a really good movie about, uh, sorry, if you make a, a sales movie about a really good sales rep, you and I probably wouldn't want to watch it. It'd probably be boring <laughs> because it's like, where's the drama? Where's the excitement? Where's the lies and the deceit and the jail? That's what people, so, you know, Hollywood is Hollywood. But beyond Hollywood, is there anything that permeate throughout the industry that allude to the idea or just in general that allude to the idea that, the close is the sexy part of the, of the whole sales process and neglecting the discovery. Well, I, I think for the most part, you know, people see the close cause it's the exchange. Yeah. It, it, it's that part that you see below the tip of the iceberg. You know, you see all those, those, those photos out there of the iceberg and everything below and what it took to get somebody to the next level. It's the same thing with sales. Nobody, you know, wants to get into, you know, the, the, the hard questions or the probing or, you know, how to find out really how to help somebody solve a problem. They just see, you know, the trailer, so to say. They, they see the cliff notes, but they don't see the story. Yeah, because, I mean, for, I, mean I, don't, I don't know for what you've sold throughout your life, but, you know, just like for me, some of the things that I've sold, those were 
like that's when the management start getting excited, right? That's when forecast is really pretty. When you're like, okay, Donald, where's this at? Is it 75%? Okay, let's talk about that. Bring it to the meeting. <laughs> let's talk about that now. They don't want to hear about all the other stuff because it's, I guess, the chances, like you're saying, it's the exchange isn't there and it's not as real as of yet. Um, but yeah, if you can't, <laughs> you can't close the door, you never open, right? It's not open. Well, I think the other thing too, and, and one of the things that I've seen, and, and I don't know how much you, you, you know, prepped your audience on my background, but you know, I've been in sales now for, for 27 years. Uh, I've personally been responsible for selling over $25 million in, in sales revenue. Uh, recently, I was just hired uh, to help Grant Cardone on a project. I was down here in Miami helping him build out, you know, his uh, national leading sales platform and, and leveraging in a coaching and a consulting component. But um yeah, you know, I, I've talked to hundreds, if not thousands of, of salespeople. And the, the biggest missing ingredient that I see, Donald, is lack of appropriate questions, fact finding, and really understanding, you know, what's in it for the buyer. And that is probably one of the biggest things that prevents many people from being able to get to the next level. Go deeper with that. What's in it for the buyer? Um, what do you mean by that? Yeah, because the, the reality is it, it's not what's important to you. It's what's important to them. And, and it's not what matters to you. It's what matters to the buyer. And, and the, the first, the number one thing that I'm going to talk about today is most people and definitely salespeople assume. You assume they understand your product. They assume that they understand what the buyer wants. Mm -hmm. They assume that they understand why today and why now? And, and assumption is one of the worst things that you can do because nine times out of 10, you're wrong. So if you don't probe, if you don't ask the right questions, if you don't find out what they're trying to accomplish, they, you know, salespeople continue to revolve down this you know, pitch deck or sales script or this canned like sales pitch that doesn't work. And at the end of the day, it comes across disingenuous. It's not authentic. It's not genuine. And people see right through that. I mean, it's 2021. <laughs> you know, the, the game has changed. So, you know, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more on this, man. Uh, Jeff, you're, you're just like, you're, you're, you're speaking my words, man. I'm, I'm loving this. And I think the one of the pieces that you par, uh, pointed out there that I'm just like a, a, a big, I agree with 100% is the assumption. I've lost plenty of deals because I've assumed. I've assumed they understood what I was saying. I assumed that they, I, I knew the next step. I assumed that the decision maker was in the process. I assumed the person was going to make the, the, the buying decision that I was talking to. And um, assumed I knew how they were going to make the decision. And a lot of times those lead to the error. So let's go down into it because we have some sales reps listening to this and they're like, all right, Donald, Jeff, I get this now. I'm in it. I'm, you guys got me hooked. What are some of those questions we should probably be using in the discovery to, or just some ideas that you have seen or you've taught or helped sellers to understand? And if it's not directly those questions examples, how do we go about formulating the questions that we should be asking, if that makes sense? Yeah, no, totally. Well, well, first and foremost, if you confuse, you lose. Yes. But again, if you confuse, you lose. Nobody cares how smart you are. Nobody cares like, you know, you drop in words that nobody understands. You need to make it so simple that anybody can understand it. And you need to make it where they can see themselves using it. Now, I'm big into NLP. Mm. with neuro-linguistic programming, learned it at a very young age, really changed the game for me. And, you know, people and just human beings in nature, they process visual images at a rate of 10 million bits a second. Wow. Visually. Auditory, 100,000. A little bit of a variance there. So essentially, as a salesperson, you are an artist, and you have to paint out the picture for the prospect on how you're going to leverage your coaching product, your tangible product, your solution to help them with the end result. And you have to do what's called future pace them into what it's going to look like. Mm 
So it, it's very strategic in how it's done. And it all starts by asking the right question. So typically I'll ask somebody, tell me about the last time that you implemented something similar to this and it failed. Ooh. It's a hard question. Yeah. But it's a question that is always anchored into a prospect's mind because everybody always remembers how things ended and usually when they didn't end well. So it's called anchoring. I always anchor in the objections before the objections happen in the fact find because I'm trying to get all this intel out. And basically, based on the questions that I ask, I create the flow of where my sales presentation is going to go. And what I do is I wrap it back around because I want the prospect to think, I'm like you, you're like me. He gets me. He understands my pain. He really wants to find out how to help me by asking targeted questions, by finding out what happened in the past. Understand what their buying threshold is. Understand how they make decisions. And most importantly, understand why today and what the end result is and what would be the impact if they didn't meet that end result. Oh man, I so for there's so much in there to unpack, Jeff. But the the idea of the future, like in, in, what do you call it, future imprinting? It's called future pacing. Future pasting. But you are, I, I I'm a, I feel that you're so right on that idea of if you are able to paint to me that picture or ask that question because. I am going to visually, um, one of the things that we have is a sales mindset program and the visual idea is so true. We partner with this organization called the Pacific Institute and it just kind of points out how we think in pictures. So mm -hmm. I'm in my mind, when you're saying that, <laughs> trying to think about some, imagine if I was going through a process with you and thinking about one of the processes that failed in the past. And it's just a hypothetical example here. But I, I personally, as a host of a podcast doing this, was visualizing that. And if I think about that with a prospect who does have that pain and they do know it and they do have that challenge, how much more vivid or how much more that's going to express to you that you understand to them that you understand where they're coming from. You know what I mean? Because that brings you to a whole nother level. And it's not like, and they're going to probably divulge so much during in that point. And you just kind of like, just, you just hit the point, uh, you know, the balloon at the right spot and it popped and everything is just flowing. So that's the first thing. And then the second piece too, which I, I thought was really good at what you, um, you mentioned with this is just the, your, uh, <laughs> the, the feeling that I got is that I'm guiding the discussion where it wants, where it should go because I've done this many different times and too many sellers, I feel they just go into a conversation and they wing it because they said, I've closed a deal in you know 1997. So I'm going to use the same method. <laughs> well, I, mean, I mean, look, man, you, you got people that will write out, I mean, you know, get a manager, VP of sales, whatever. Here's the 10 standard fact finding questions you want to ask. And you sound yeah. like grand inquisitor or a prosecuting attorney. You, you need to go into, you got to be fluid. You yeah. got to understand of like the individual that you're talking to, um, how do they want to process information? Are they very logical oriented? Are they emotion oriented? Can you ask the question to shift their state to get them in a posturing, whether it's, you know, you hit like you probed and you hit a nerve and how to get that to expand out, to get them emotionally wrapped into it, to get them bought in. And that's how you can guide them along and through the process by taking them out of a very logical engagement to emotional engagement. You, know, you always want to try to get into the emotions of the prospect because people buy on emotion, they justify with logic. Oh, shoot, man. Yeah. hundred percent on that. The um, going back to this, you know, just thinking about, you know, if, if somebody, if you're listening to this podcast and you think about your last purchase, <clears throat> you're probably going to go say that you made that decision emotionally, just like what Jeff shared there. So I guess the, the, the concept now, why don't we see more salespeople thriving and doing this? Is it because you feel that they don't, just don't know? Or is it because like you're saying, the management is, you know, push down a script or help me? No, they, they, they just mean, you know, one of the best things you can do is role play. And, yeah. you know, right now I'm working on a project for a very large medical company. So I've come in here to help them. Um, really build out, create a go-to-market strategy and to scale a sales force. And one of the things I do every single day is I role play every single morning with these new salespeople because listen, prepare more in practice and you bleed less and more. 
<laughs> right? So one more time, it, one more time, Jeff, get that for him. One more time for the people in the back. Prepare more in practice and you'll bleed less in war. And, and it's like, you have to get your game tight and you got to leverage what I call the power of prediction. And that power of prediction is in any aspect of the sales process, definitely in the fact find, because you may ask a question that gets that prospect to go off on a different direction. You got to be prepared for that and know how to pivot. And, you know, I, I, I always lever, leverage analogies and metaphors, analogies and metaphors. If you're not using that, you're missing the boat. You're, you're, you're missing a major hook to get you to the next level. So I'm going to throw one at you right now. Please. I was so gonna there ask there was a boxer named Mike Tyson. And yeah. what did he say? It's all good, man, until you get punched in the face. Yeah. Right. So it's the same thing where, where you think you have it figured out. You think is the prospect that you have the right CRM, you have the right software system. Maybe you have the right coach. But if you're not tracking, you're not measuring your progress. If you don't know how to gauge it, it's all relative. Yeah. So, so if you can show them a way, especially if there's people out there listening today that are essentially selling commodities, mm -hmm. selling something that everybody has where there's no differentiation. You got to be able to find out. You got to be that trusted advisor. You got to be able to go in through the discovery and, and be an expert in the space. You got to point out areas. Like I'm coaching somebody right now that's uh, that does software in um, the distribution industry for food, sure. right? And, and he's going up against you know all these big companies. But what does he do? He's a niche seller that'll break down whether it's keto whether it's gluten-free, whatever it is, to help companies know how to distribute their product in the right stores to be able to create market share. So the reality is you call up a company and you'll say, you know, hey, this is, hey, this is Jeff calling. I'm calling about this. Hey, we already got it covered. We, have, we already have a data provider. I understand. But the true beauty is what if I could show you a way where I could get in deep granular into your product and show you how to maximize profitability in your most profitable space and be able to help you stock up those shelves, right? And then you're gonna go into the fact find. This is the other thing too that people don't understand. In, in sales, there is no like, you know, perfect system. I might make a cold call. I got to be ready to go into the fact find. I got to be ready to pivot by, by making a big claim. Well, Jeff, what exactly do you mean? Okay, well, perfect. Let me ask you this question. If I was going to ask you today in your current data provider, if you wanted to break down the top three market leaders in this segment for keto, could you do it? Uh, I don't believe so. What do you think the impact would be if I could show you a way to be able to get that information? What would that market share be worth to you? So I'm going through by asking these questions, big claims, man, big, big, oh, yeah. that could be millions of dollars. <laughs> so when I come back later and I tell them, it, you know, it's $45,000 for the solution. They're not like, that's a lot of money because it's all relative. Yes. But again, it's like, it's the dance through the deal. And it's being good enough where you know that when you get into that compressed situation where you might not have a discovery call, it might be, hello, greeting, cold call, get the right person on the phone, have the big claim, go in and ask the fact find, blend into a presentation and go to the close. Boom. Many people will get the deal from the proper fact find, from the proper questions that they're prepared to ask because again, they knew going into what happens if they say hello, what happens if they give me that segue from the cold call to really be able to get them to the next level. And that just comes with practice. Practice. You tied it all the way back to this, the role play and the preparation. Cause that was going to, I was going to ask how much prep besides the role play, what other ways could I prepare? Because I find sometimes sellers, they will prepare the heck out. And you've seen this before. They, they become like, you know, mini scientists, right? Um, researching everything. Sorry about that there. My bad on that. We'll edit that out. <laughs> Apple, getting your phone connected to your computer. Um, but, you know, let's start from there again. A lot of salespeople, sometimes they become like mini Einstein and they want to do like tons of research before they actually feel confident to pick up the phone and actually make the call. So what, what amount of preparation should I do before I do uh, an, a, an outreach um, that could lead to a discovery? Or even if I know I'm going to talk to Jeff today and we're having a discovery meeting, what kind of preparation should I do in advance for that outside of role-playing? Yeah, I mean, I think it really depends on the vertical. 
right? But I think no matter what you're doing, you need to know before you pick up that phone, you need to understand the, the space. You need to understand the pain points. You need to understand what's going on in the marketplace, especially right now in 2021. You can't miss today. You can't make a mistake. So if you're calling a client and you can provide valuable information to ask the right questions and bring up ideas to get the conversation flowing, you're not relevant. And if you're not relevant, you lose. And, and, and if you're not in that conversation by you know the questions that you ask, the person on the other end of the line, if they don't think you're going to provide value to them, then you won't even get to first base. So it's like the questions you have to ask have to probe the, the prospect or pr probe the client to say, wow, that's a really good question. They have to really think into it and be able to answer it in a way that's going to help you continue through the process instead of just generic questions that, that they hear over and over and over again. Jeff, I've asked you several questions here and, uh, you know, you, you've, you, man, you articulated some very good points and anyone who listened to the first part of this interview so far, they can walk away smart people if they apply what they learn. But what have I not asked you about discovery that we should know? Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, in the, in the discovery process, you need to get clarity and understanding from the prospect specifically on again, what they want to accomplish, because nine times out of 10, depending on what you're selling, if you're selling, you know, a widget, if you're selling a software suite or whatever you have, the, the prospect or the client might hook on one item or one service, but mm. you have to make sure you know what it really is they're trying to accomplish. Because I've seen many people go down the wrong road, offer the wrong product, and also not find out really what the scope, what the size of the opportunity is, because based on what that pain is or what the opportunity of gain is, it's going to give you the opportunity to really craft out the proper proposal. So if they don't ask the, the, you know, the right questions, by the time they make the proposal, they might say, yeah, I'm not interested because they don't see enough value because the, the, the questions were not asked enough to generate really what the buyer is going to find at the end is worthy for them to do one thing that every single buyer prospect or company hates. And that's change. Oh, People do not like change unless it's really going to push them down the field. And I'm going to share something else with you. That's huge. Sure. Big, big discovery thing. So I want everybody to take a piece of paper down. I want them to write down three letters. Okay. Number one, F number two, U number three, D. And those are all the reasons why your prospect won't buy from you. And anchoring means that you're going to take away the objection before it happens. Let me break down those three letters for you. Number one, F, fear. Number two, U, uncertainty. And number three, doubt. And those are the three things that will prevent you moving the ball down the field, that will prevent you from getting the deal, and that will prevent you from getting a call back from this customer, because those are all the three things that are, they're faced with in their mind as to why they don't want to move forward with you. So you have to answer all three of those in a way that's going to give them the conviction and the confidence that you're a trusted advisor that they want to partner with. Oh, man, 100% gold, F-U-D, FUD, fear, you, and the doubt. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Uncertainty, yeah. Uncertainty and doubt. And you know, when this really came in place was during COVID. I call it the trifecta. Sheesh. We were all afraid. We didn't know what was going to happen. And we wondered if the world was going to end. <laughs> and then when it happens, you know, it, you see the shift in people. You see the shift in everything. I mean, everybody has a mask. You know, everybody's, you know, trying to be cautious on what they're doing. No one really knows I mean, we're, we're in February of 2021. I don't know how much farther we are ahead than we were in like May of 2020. Yeah. Right. But again, all you can do is, is do the best that you can to move forward. And you got to be able to do the right things. You got to be able to ask the right questions. And again, you know, I mean, I have pages and pages and pages and pages of fact finding questions. We could go on for hours, but I will tell you this. It's something that, you know, if you're listening to this today and you do want to get to the next level, you have to be willing to put in the work. Mm. And there's a gentleman out there that I admire very much. His name is Malcolm Gladwell. 
Yes. And Malcolm Gladwell said it takes 10,000 hours to be a master. I have been studying sales, persuasion, psychology since I was 26 years old for over three hours a day. And it's just been something for me that over and over and over and over again, like I read anywhere from eight to 10 books a month, anything I can get my hands on, I'm absorbing information. I'm taking it all and I'm cataloging it all. And I'm a big believer that you can learn from every human being. But what you have to do is when you're studying this, and this goes back to what you were asking me before, if you really want to become great, you take this information that I'm providing you today, you take the information that you find in books, you take the information that you find in courses, and you ask yourself one question, how can I integrate this in my day-to-day to make me more successful? How can I relate this to some of the challenges that I have? And then what you'll find out after a while is there's just patterns and there's consistencies to things. And no matter what industry you're in, I mean, I've sold into automotive, real estate, marketing, you know, medical, software, you know, whatever. Everything that I've done has been successful in every vertical because once you find the consistency, it works because there's two commonalities to success in sales. Number one is psychology. and Number two is marketing. If you can understand psychology and marketing, you can leverage it in anything you want to do. And it comes into the questioning. You have to create those pictures. You have to create the hooks. I always tell people, you can't know yourself if you it, it, you can't grow yourself if you don't know yourself. Yes. How do you absorb information? What's your personality style? How can you talk to a prospect and understand right away? I'm big into disc, right? Yeah. Are they driver? Are they you know? Are they more analytical? Are they expressive? Whatever they are, you got to connect. People think they connect by like asking crazy questions for rapport, but you're connecting by getting on their wavelength to how they want to be communicated with. Also very important in the discovery. So I'll pivot with (laughs) a prospect or a customer based on the dialogue. Are they visual? Are they auditory? Are they kinesthetic? How do they want to absorb information? People believe what they see, not what they hear. I like to show a lot of visuals to people. So it's just, I'm passionate about it. And I believe there's levels in life. You always got to go to the next level and you just do that by the commitment to excellence. Do you want to be a professional or do you want to be an amateur? Well, Jeff, I mean, I'm sure people out there listening to this can connect with you because you you're, you know, world-class at this stuff. How did it go about doing so if they're interested in you or working with you or your organization or just, just to be a friend or connect? Yeah. I mean, listen, I mean, I'm out there, you know, I'm on social media. My website's jeffbounds.com. Um, I work with high performers, both in, you know, organizations and individuals, but my main thing is about giving back. My main thing is about providing value. And, uh, you know, the one thing looking back, if someone was to ask me, if you, if you knew now what you knew then, what would it be? And I was just like, for everybody that's listening to this today, there's so much information that's out there that can get you farther down in your career, faster than ever before, leverage it. Become a student of the game. Mm -hmm. Realize that anybody can be great once, but you know, whether you're Tom Brady or LeBron James or whoever you are, it's like the consistency of the reps is the consistency of the practicing, the consistency of knowing that right now you have to pivot and you have to adapt. And sales is just constantly changing because there's so much information. So For you to get somebody's attention and for you to get somebody's time, remember, always provide value. So not ABC, APV, always provide value and you'll be able to get whatever you want in your life. Love that, man. Jeff, thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show today. I appreciate you, man. That was our good friend, Mr. Jeff Bounds. And if you want to go ahead and connect with Jeff, you can find all of his information by simply going to our show notes. If you're watching this for the first time on TSC TV here on YouTube, please go ahead and subscribe. But in addition to that, I want you to scroll down. You can click on some of the links and go back to Jeff's profile and also to his website and to see some of the amazing things that he's accomplishing. I'm a big fan. I recommend that you connect with dude. He is practical, down to earth, and just gives sound wisdom. You can also go ahead and check out some of our sponsors because as you can see, they are giving away some amazing things, some great offers. And the biggest thing is that you just need to take advantage of it, man. We did this for you. We already hustled. Just go ahead and try their stuff. What's the worst that can happen? Test it out. And if you don't like it, then so be it. But try it. Take advantage of the great offer they're, offer, they're giving out today. And uh, that's that's my 
encouragement to you. I want you to succeed more than anything. I want you to thrive. I want you to find more of those ideal customers. I want you to know what to say when you reach out to them. I want you to close more deals. But most importantly, I want you to go out each and every single day and challenge yourself and do big things. Thanks so much for watching. Hey, thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video today. If you enjoyed the content, I ask you to go ahead and hit that like button, that thumbs up at the bottom right hand corner. Also to make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. This way we'll keep you up to date with all the latest sales strategies, latest tools, and things that are going to help you to not only find more prospects, but to close more deals. Thanks so much.